Welcome to Jyotish with Mark Boney. Mark is an internationally renowned teacher, author, and practitioner of Jyotish, the ancient astrological science of India, and one of the foremost disciples in the West of the legendary Indian astrologer K. N. Rao. In a very simple lucid way. The author of 18 e-books and an adjunct faculty member of the Institute of Astrology, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, in New Delhi, India, Mark is known for his engaging teaching and writing style and his ability to communicate the complex concepts of Jyotish in a clear, understandable way. Now, here is Mark Boney. Hello everyone, I'm here to talk to you today about an upcoming course I'm going to be teaching online on Jaimini Jyotish. In the Indian uh, astrological tradition, there are two main uh, methodologies for birth chart analysis and, and prediction. One is referred to as parashari. This is by far and away the more common and uh, well-known system. The other is referred to as Jaimini. Both of these are, are named after the great sages, the Maharishis that were the proponents of these two different uh, systems. And um, I had the good fortune back in the 90s to spend a lot of time with a gentleman, uh, Kay and Rao, uh, very f uh, marvelous, very famous Jyotishi of India. And he, this was something of a speciality of his, uh, a primary interest in which he did a lot of research. And uh, I learned this system from him and actually his particular approach to it, which I think is highly effective. So uh, what's unique about this system and, and why should one be interested in learning it? Um, one of the things I really like about it is that uh, events can oftentimes come out in a very simple, straightforward, very clear sort of way. Um, and to give you a feel for this is uh, the purpose of this presentation. Just a couple of things you need to understand in order to follow it. Uh, one of the unique aspects of this form of astrology is that uh, planets in a chart take on a special significance based on their degrees within a sign relative to each other. So for example, in anyone's chart there's going to be some planet in any sign that is, has the highest degrees amongst all the others. This be, takes on the uh, status of what's called the Amakaraka, I'm sorry, the Atmakaraka in this system, which simply means the indicator of self. Now, the, another planet, say the planet with the lowest degrees, takes on a different status. It's known as the Dharakaraka, which means indicator of spouse. But what I want to be talking about uh, first and showing you an illustration of is the way in which the planet with the second highest degrees, referred to as the Amatikaraka, becomes something of a career indicator and can be utilized to time periods where a person might do particularly well in their career or professionally. Now, in the chart of Catherine Zeta-Jones, this planet um, becomes Mercury. Looking at her chart here in either the North or South Indian style, whichever you prefer, you will see that her Mercury falls in Virgo. This is a good thing. Um, in, when Mercury falls into Virgo, it's said to be in its sign of exaltation, which simply means that it can give its results very strongly and favorably. Right? So she has this good condition of her Amatyakarika, her career indicator. Now the other thing you need to appreciate about the Jaimini system is that the timing mechanism, the way timing is shown in this system is through things called sign periods. Now if you have some familiarity with the Parashara system, then you're probably more familiar with the idea of planetary periods. Um, you know, the idea that at any one time a person is said to be running the period of some planet. Well, in this system, at any one time, a person is said to be running the period of a particular sign. Now, you know, if you looked at the timing for her, you would see that back in the 90s, when she became this big international movie star and celebrity, she was running her Virgo sign period, containing this uh, well-placed, very favorable indicator in her chart, Mercury, the Amatyakarika. Uh, and from that standpoint, it was very uh, easily predictable in this system that this could prove very exceptional for her professionally. But uh, another major event th that happened in her life during her Virgo period also could have been rather simply and easily identified 
in this astrological form as well. I mentioned earlier that there's a planet in the chart that has the fewest degrees amongst the other planets. That's referred to as the Dharakaraka, indicator of spouse. Right? And when one is running a period, all right, where from the seventh house or the seventh sign from there, the Dharakaraka falls in that seventh house of marriage, of relationship, well, this is when a very person uh, you know, has the karma of marrying. Now, in her case, if you look at the sign opposite Virgo, it's Pisces, right, containing her moon, which is this planet with the fewest degrees in her chart, taking on the significance of indicating the spouse. So she both rose up in her career during her Virgo period, containing her well-placed uh, planet with the second highest degrees, but she also married during this period because in the seventh house from Virgo, her Dara Karaka fell there. Um, and so this is what I mean when I say that uh, events can come off in a very straightforward, simple way in the Jaime system. Now, is it always that simple? No, but sometimes it, it is. And to show you, therefore, another illustration of this, um, I'm going to show you the chart of another major movie star, Angelina Jolie. Um, not just a movie star, she's well known as a, a humanitarian, and she's also known for having uh, a lot of children three of which she adopted and three of which she had biologically with her partner, Brad Pitt. So uh, in her case, uh, we, you know, we saw all those planets in Virgo in the chart of Catherine Zeta-Jones. In the chart of Angelina Jolie, we see three planets in the opposite sign, Pisces. Uh, her Jupiter is there, her Moon is there, her Mars is there. And if we saw which of these planets in her chart were the planets with the second highest degrees, you would see it was her Amatya Karaka is Jupiter. Right? And again, we see Jupiter in a, in a very good condition. It's in its own sign, Pisces. And again, what that means is that it can just give its results uh, strongly and favorably. Uh, and the idea that it would do that when she ran her Pisces major period in this system, which actually coincided with um, most of uh, the decade of the 2000s, 2000 to 2010, which if you see, it's a matter of record, it's during that time she just became this huge international movie star and uh, a celebrity. But, you know, Jupiter's not the only planet in Pisces, as we saw, it also contains her moon, contains her Mars. And if we looked at their degrees and what special status they take on, her moon um, in her chart is the planet with the fifth highest degrees and is, is referred to as the Putrakaraka, which literally means indicator of sun, but it's the idea of indicator of children. Right? Uh, it carries all the significations, all the meanings of uh, what would be referred to as the fifth house of a birth chart, one of the main meanings being, of course, children. So uh, from that standpoint, it was, again, rather easily uh, predictable, given particularly the age she was and the time of life when she ran her Pisces period, that it would, she would have the karma of having children come in, in her life, which, of course, they did in, in a rather big sort of way. So again, um, you can see the way this, uh, these two events, her career rise and um, the birth of her children, which all of which she had actually before she actually married, um, uh, could be uh, indicated rather simply and clearly in this particular system. Now, um, I want to give you one more uh, illustration of this, uh, utilizing the chart, uh, give me a moment as I bring it up here, of someone very much in the news here. Uh, whoops, didn't do that right. Very much in the news here, and that is uh, Donald Trump. Here we go. So most of you know Donald Trump is, was, a, was a real estate entrepreneur, had, has become enormously wealthy through real estate. And then, you know, I believe in the early 2000s, he became a reality TV star. He had his own show called The Apprentice uh, that was very popular, syndicated worldwide. And I think that's where he got his, you know, huge worldwide celebrity. But he's in the news these days because he's making a very, um, you might say, improbable run at uh, becoming the president of the U.S. When he announced his candidacy um, last year, many people took it as rather a joke. Um, but uh, to everyone's amazement, you know, particularly political observers, uh, he has run a very successful campaign, and now it looks as if he is going to be the Republican candidate for the U.S. presidential election in the fall. A rather astonishing turn of events for many.
But the reason I wanted to show you chart, this chart is to introduce you to another unique feature of the Jaime system, and that is the use of a special lagna, a special house that would become the first house from which you would then see the, the different yogas, the different planetary patterns. It's referred to as the Karakamsha lagna, and um, you know I won't go into the technicalities as to how that gets uniquely determined in each chart, but uh, just take it as a matter of you know uh, faith here that for Donald Trump, his um, Karakamsha lagna becomes Virgo. All right. So you know the main text that uh, is the uh, original source text for the Jaimini system is something called Maharishi Jaimini's Upadesha Sutras. Uh, just a you know a marvelous, um, interesting treatise uh, on this system of Jodish, and in that system uh, there is a huge chapter, the largest chapter within that treatise, dealing with the effects of planets from the Karakamsha Lagna, and um, in one of those yogas, one of those planetary combinations, one of the sutras, it says that when Mercury is placed in the tenth house from the Karakamsha Lagna, and additionally receives the additional influence of another natural benefic, you know, the planets are classified either as natural benefics or natural malefics, then uh, the person would be extremely successful in their uh, line of work, their line of endeavor, whatever that is. And this is uh, exactly the combination that we see in the chart of Donald Trump. If you make Virgo, which is his Karakamsha, as if it's the first house of his chart, then you see what happens is that Mercury goes into the tenth house of career from there, and again we see it in a very, very good condition. It's uh, in its own sign, uh, Gemini. Whenever a planet's in its own sign, again it's said to give its results strong and favorably. Right? Now, what's additionally interesting about Trump's chart is I've indicated to you that you know his his main um, method, or his main occupation has been as a real estate entrepreneur, very successful one, in which case um, the planet that has the fourth highest degrees amongst all the other planets in any chart takes on a status of what's called the uh, uh, MK or the Matrikaraka. One of the significations of this is a property in real estate. So this idea of that his um, MK, which in his case is Mercury, is falling in the tenth house from his Karakamsha Lagna, well placed, gets the additional aspect of another benefic, is the patterning in his chart that indicates it was his karma to be hugely successful within real estate. Now, um, what's additionally interesting is that another sutra within this treatise by Jaimini says that if there are only natural benefics falling in the angle houses, one, four, seven, and ten from this special lagna, this Karakamsha Lagna, well, then the person can become a king. Now, you know, in the ancient astrological texts, that just means that it would be someone who would become very significant, be in a position of power, be in a position of influence. And this, again, is, is exactly the pattern we see in the chart of Donald Trump. Um, his Karakamsha Lagna, as I mentioned, is Virgo. It, it contains the natural benefic Jupiter. Uh, we already saw how in that, another natural benefic, uh, Mercury falls in the tenth house, another angle for that, and the other angle houses don't have any other planets, so that particular combination given in the ancient text applies in total to Donald Trump's chart, and um, obviously he has, has become something of a, a king within his sphere of influence, uh, you know, both when he was in, in real estate and when he was a real, reality TV star. Now it looks like he's going to be the Republican candidate for the U.S. presidential election coming up here in the fall of 2016. So my idea here today was to give you a feel for the Jaimini system if you've not really been exposed to it before and how, again, um, events can come out rather simply in a straightforward way. So now I just want to say a little bit about uh, the upcoming course I'm going to be teaching. Uh, first of all, it's going to teach you all the essential elements of the Jaimini system. Uh, <clears throat> there are some very unique features of it. Aspects happen through signs, not through planets. There's a very interesting concept called Argola, another way in which planets influence each other. Uh, you're going to learn about the main timing tool, uh, something 
called Charadasha. You're going to lear be learning about these unique uh, ascendants that are used in the Jaimini system, one of which is Karakamsha that I've talked about, another called the um, Aruta Lagna. You're going to learn something about something called Padas, uh, another unique feature of the Jaimini system. And I'm going to be looking at, in particular, how to time three very important events in life, all of which I've illustrated here. Career rise, number one, uh, marriage, number two, and childbirth, uh, number three. I think if you, uh, you know, love astrology and, and uh, have had some exposure and at least understand the basics of the Parashri system, I think you'll find this particular astrological form very unique, very brilliant and fascinating. Uh, the course is going to be eight weeks in duration. Um, it's going to be beginning Saturday, May 14th. Details about it and uh, the ability to register, you can do that by going to my website, which is simply www.markboney.com. Mark is with a C and the last name Boney, B-O-N-E-Y, markboney.com. And you'll see the details about um, this particular course. and. Uh, so, uh, if you're interested, I uh, would love to have you join us, welcome your participation, and uh, maybe see you within the course. For now, namaste. Learn more at www.markboney.com.